and I wouldn't doubt if he gets another one or two added on there before he ends his competitive career. I don't think he's going to be a player that plays, you know, beyond 50 years old or even close to that, really. But you never know what all the great things going on in the game certainly motivate Shane and he doesn't need much motivation but anything added is something special. Well if the margin of victory in the lag is anything to go by this is going to be pretty comfortable for Van Boning and he's made good use of it here. Yeah really only one big upset so far in day one that I can see and that was Ruiz which we'll have on later on on the one loss side. Yeah, and none of the matches taking place later today in the one-loss side were due to be on the main table, but because we've been getting through the schedule so quickly, that's going to be put on here last as a sort of bonus attraction, so that'll be something to look forward to. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz playing to stay in the tournament. Yeah, not something he's had to deal with in some time, really. All right, Shane got a little out of line, so he's going to have to maybe play into the nine ball here. I'm not sure if he can draw by the nine or not. Probably can. Like a mild draw stroke. Winter break format. Shane really gets motivated for the winter break format. Five U.S. Open titles where they also play winter break. be quite cruel if you're on the wrong side of it, but you can also do some special things in these matches in that winter break format. And it's a pretty special start for Shane Van Boning. In no time at all, he breaks and runs the opening rack to lead James Channon 1-0. News of a Hill Hill finish on table 14. Sotiris Karatsakis and Shane Conroy, that one is eight all. Loho Sum. Did so well at the World Masters recently. Beat Shane Van Boning along the way. Leading 5-0 now against Kinga Rauch of Poland. Looks like Skylar Woodward getting his two minutes of practice in before his match kicks off. And Badr Alawadi, who's going to be playing for Kuwait at the World Cup of Pool next month alongside Omar Al Shaheen. 7-4 up against Mark McGauley. And Torsten Homan, former world champion, 5-1 lead over Tamás Fagvoldi of Hungary. Yeah, Thorsten, another one of those players along the lines like Mika, trying to get his game back. And he's shown some, some signs of it for sure. One of your compatriots, Tyler Steyer, 2 0 up against Miguel Silva of Portugal. So that's what's going on elsewhere. Back on the main table, the world champion leads 1 0. It's amazing no one really unloads on the rack any more than Shane and how much control is involved without trying to really control it, just how pure he hits the balls. And he's going to have a, obviously a great shot on the one and pretty easy position play here. Normally on the slick table, you would draw this ball versus a top inside. Wants to pull this near the side pocket he's standing. That's perfect. The winner of this will play Matthew Wrigley of Scotland in the next round. He was a comfortable winner earlier against Bharat Ramakrishna. Nine racks to three. Shane, really a player. When he gets in position, he still wants to make sure he's playing the correct shot, the percentage play. So even though a huge favorite in this match, he won't bypass all the work he he usually puts in. You mentioned there that you see him playing on 
to around about the age of 50. Obviously, a lot could change in the meantime. It's hard to believe he's still only 38. It feels like he's been around forever. Well, you'll know his his 40th birthday will come with a first time ballot Hall of Fame entry. That's for sure. So we'll know and the rest of the world will know when he's 40 years old. He may have gotten a bit snookered here. This is going to be close. Didn't quite get the stun on the ball that he wanted, I think. Does he have to maybe swerve this? We'll see. Yeah, I see him elevating the back end of the queue. Well, that's a good view there. He's just got to attack a little bit. Well, Shane, he just started winning big events at such a a young age as far as when he first really started playing the pro events. Well, he was only 24 when he won the first of his joint record five U.S. Opens. Yeah, that record with one of his heroes, Earl the Pearl Strickland. Would have loved to see him here in the event, but didn't make it over. So as dominant an opening two racks as you could possibly see. A couple of balls down off the break. Another run out from there. Shane Van Boning swiftly leads James Channon 2-0. Now that he has addressed that one big gap in his career, Jeremy and, won, Jeremy, and won that world title, do you think the priority now is going to be getting that sixth US Open, breaking that record? Well, yeah, and Shane gears up for the big events, but he's a smart guy. He gears up with him with, for, you know, with every event he plays. So Shane is just uh, wanting to put in his match time, play quality matches time and time again. And if he does that, good chance that sixth US Open will, will be on his mantle sometime soon. Yeah, and you sort of feel he's not really under time pressure to do it because, as you said, could have another 10 years or so as a top player. Shane Conroy has won that hill hill finish against Sotiris Karatsakis. Well, I know you weren't there in Atlantic City last year, Michael, but he wasn't that far from that sixth title last year, in my opinion. I watched a lot of his matches there for about a month, and he played all quality. It had to be really taken away from him uh, to get beat. Well, he should get another nice shot on the one, it appears. The eight's going to hamper a little bit of position play. Maybe he has to take a little longer shot on the four. You can see the five over the opposite side, so. And I don't think he can really avoid the eight with the cue ball. Now, do we know what part of the UK that James is from? I'll try to find that out for you. I know he's been talking about it on social media, and playing down his chances, but also talking about the excitement of being involved. Getting such a dream draw in the opening round. And I think a smart shot there by Shane. Again, the five over the opposite side. So really all about just pocketing this four ball. And I have to play a bit of some work if he does get to that six to the seven to get proper on the seven to hold for the eight. Probably just pinches this with a little like a light draw stroke. I know he lives in Cardiff, the capital of Wales. James Channon, not sure if he's originally from there. Well, that's a nice place to live, I'll tell you. Well, former home of the World Pool Championship. Yeah, and that's really where it started to change and, and become, it's always been a great title, of course, but really the fields got a lot better. Of course, the purse increased, the venues improved, and the same thing happening here with our inaugural UK Open. Little light with the cue ball there, so he may not be able to get above the eight. We'll see. He's a little straight. He's going to have to hold the cue ball. Just a stop shot. Well, 
Well, I right. said it was a dream draw for James Shannon. Big day in his life to be out here playing the world champion, but we've not seen him get involved yet. Um, that little wide on the pocket, but had to cheat it a little bit to move the cue ball easily and another break and run for SVB. It's become a familiar story on the main table today, seeing the big names dominating against the lesser lights. And in the early stages of this match, it's the same. The world champion very much on top. 3-0 he leads. On the other main table, Kinga Rauk. I told you she's really up against it against Loho Sum, and she's just had an absolute shocker of a miss on the six when she had a good chance to finally get off the mark. She's 7-0 down there against Lowe, who made such a big impact at the World Masters. Well, we always talk about, or at least I've always talked about with some guys, that imagine what the level of play will be in our sport. You know, it's always been incredible, but once, you know, the tournaments get bigger, there's more of them, the international flavor that we know the sport carries, and just talk about the guys if it ever got to you know somewhere around like golf uh, just imagine how little mistakes there would be well in terms of there being tournaments pretty much every week and the prize money yeah I mean, you know that's where you're looking at a 200 guys making a full-time living and a good one playing professional pool we all know they love it three nil This is going to be another offensive opportunity. He's not going to pass on this combination. And I wonder if there was an odds on a, a nine racks and out. This would be one of the guys you would definitely follow if you had some type of prop bet on that. Well, given how good he is at the break, I think he might be the number one player you'd be anticipating. You might perhaps see something like that from. Yeah, I'd have to say no one's broke and ran more racks in the last 15 years than, than this guy. Keeps it simple here. I think just comes kind of out where he's at now. Yeah. British player Benji Buckley is on the hill against the experienced Vincent Fake. 8-3 in that one. Good to see Vincent back out. One of the best players from... France for many years. Played Moscone Cup, didn't he? I don't recall him ever making it. He was in the mix a couple of different years. I could be wrong, but I think he might have played in it some really? time ago. Okay. Yeah. Maybe once then. Yeah, I think it was just the once. I remember the first year that Matchroom took over the World Pool Championships in '99. He was in the group with Efren Reyes, and Efren Reyes had to win his match against Vincent to qualify for the final 64. Vincent had him 6-2 to two in a race to seven. Efren came back to win that match, and we all know what happened from there. He was the 64th seed in the final 64 and went on to win the tournament. Now, a quick clearance here in rack number four. And it's just the same old story, isn't it? James Channon must be so frustrated he's not getting a look in of any description whatsoever. And yet another break and run from Shane Van Boning, playing like the world champion that he is. Let's have a look at table two. Loho Sum on the hill against... What do you make of Low, Jeremy? We saw him feature well in the World Championship and more particularly the World Masters. How far can he go? Well, he's each of those events he got better and better. I think his technique has gotten a little better. He's been spending some time with Kelly Fisher. And I think he's just a man's going to settle in more and more. Um, you know, I think I put him down there around the 20 to 30 range in the players that could that could do something, you know, in that mix, maybe 25 to 35. This is a quality event, so I would have to say there's a good 20 to 25 ahead of him. But pool, like many other sports, especially individual sports, momentum is key and confidence is even more key. 
And he really had a chance to win that 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 tournament in Gibraltar just uh, nine days ago. Well, he beat this man along the way, but it's turning into a very different day for Shane Van Boning today. Although that's not ideal. Yeah, but after running four, it's a pretty doable cross corner bank and it offers position on the two. So I don't think you'll see a safety here from Shane. Just kind of a medium speed bank. He can hit it with a high ball, I believe anyways. Just come roaming towards the nine ball with the cue ball. Loho some now has two balls left to get another whitewash. That'll all change in these next few days. We won't see many of those. No, absolutely. I think we expected a lot of them in the first round and we're getting them. Yeah, he's played that nicely, hasn't he? Even when it didn't finish absolutely ideal for him, it's been no problem at all. And James Channon can probably see the writing on the wall once again here. It was 1996, by the way, Jeremy, that Vincent Facke played the Moscone here in London, actually. Yeah, I was, because I, I played with Vincent after I played the Moscone my first in 99, to, and he was a very good player. Of course, Europe was starting to shape up a little differently at that time. A lot of players starting to come into form. Really great guy. I know he entertains a lot on the on the, the three cushion table. Big game in France. And uh, Loho Sum has just banked the nine to complete a 9 0 win over King Garauk. And on this day of many whitewashes in the first round of the UK Open, Shane Van Boning in just a few moments, is going to be more than halfway to adding his own name to the list. He is 100% dominant here, and he leads James Channon 5 0. Yeah, the ultimate punishment for that loss of the lag so far with five racks and out. Yeah, you mentioned the US Open in Atlantic City, where Van Boning was making his latest attempt last year to finally break the record and get to six, be the US Open's greatest ever player on his own. Lost to Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, needed to get a win on the loser's side and got it against no less a figure than Alban Ocean, but then lost to Alusius Yap in the last 16. Yap, of course, went on to do so well. And as you mentioned, I wasn't at that one, but I was in Las Vegas in 2019 for his previous attempt. And that was a similar story because he went out also at the last 16 stage against Wu Cha Ching, who also went on to get to the final. Yeah, what a final that was. Some unfortunate drama there for Wu, but we can all say a guy that did win it was very deserving and another favorite here in the UK Open, that being Joshua Filler, who really dismantled his opponent earlier. It just does happen so often. We're gonna get our first look, most likely, at James. So sure on the hill in the old British clash with John Chapman, 8 7. Yeah, he probably rolls out somewhere near this bottom cushion, I would think. Maybe moves the three a bit, maybe. Doesn't want to roll out too much to the left of the three. The, the one will be cuttable on the side. So I, I would guess anyways, maybe bumps the three and leaves the cue ball kind of where it's at now. Could roll out a table, but the one eight combination, very playable with the two ball there. Even without the two there, very playable. Imran Majid advanced, another very fine UK player. Benjamin Buckley. Benji's uh, come to the U.S. several times. And I guess he's rolling out to the top cushion here. And just like before we had with the Alvin Ocean match, I think James has got to take this on no matter if he plays the aggressive combination or goes for some type of safety. I'd probably shoot the combo. I know it sounds like a lot of distance here, but 
It's not laying too bad. <coughs> yeah, you're referring back to Alban Ocean's match against Sergio Lagunas, and the man from Spain made a fairly conservative call when it came to a push out and certainly counted against him. Never really got a look in after that and lost 9 0. He's got a safety where he can kind of come off his right side of the one, run, roam in the cue ball underneath the three maybe, but if you don't get the snooker there, you're going to be in big trouble. Looks like he's contemplating cutting the one. And he's elevated the cue, so he must be cutting it to the other corner, trying to draw the cue ball for shape. Usually overcuts this on the slick table. He's undercut it badly, actually. But that's so hard, isn't it, when you've got any sort of difficulty attached to the pot, when you've been sitting in your chair for the whole match, coming in cold. Well, yeah, it is. But, I mean, you got to commend him taking it on. Maybe had a little talk with himself. When he gets that chance at the table, he's going he's gonna to see what he can do. Now, yeah. Shane probably hits off the left side, just, I think, bringing the cue ball a couple cushions near the three. Well, maybe not. Maybe he's just banking the one down between the three, four. That looks like a pretty easy play. He's got to go a little bit, and that'll keep James off the offensive play. Yeah, on his previous visit, I think you're absolutely right. He did make the right call. Got to try to make something happen. He's got very little to lose anyway. I think with all the nine nils we've seen today and with the way this match has started, I think everyone's looking at this and pretty much expecting it's going to be the same story. So not really any reason to be too conservative. Yeah, and, you know, James maybe has to play the match of his life to just even contend here, but the table is offering to where you can sit your opponent down no matter what their name is. This looks super thin on the one, maybe trying to slowly go behind the three. Very delicate shot here. And that was just always going to be tough. That's where some of the, you know, maybe English snooker players or eight ball players may recognize that, hey, kicking to the bottom cushion was a better percentage on not leaving a shot than actually attacking on a ball I could see. Shane a little off angle here, so I think he thinks he can't really hold position for the one, so he's going to try and carry the one up to the middle of the table. Is that what he maybe follows the cue ball up to the middle of the table? Yeah. I don't think you're going to see him attack here unless he plays a two-way shot of some sort. So James getting a, getting a little time at the table here, here in rack number six. But it feels like every time he comes to it, he's got some sort of difficulty to contend with. And what he really wants, of course, is just some sort of routine starter to try and build some rhythm. Well, Shane didn't win all those titles by overlooking his opponent, so he's going he's gonna to play it pretty tough all the way to the end and kind of get in that game mode, if you might say. That old British clash between So Shaw and John Chapman has now gone Hill Hill. And Torsten Homan of Germany is on the hill. 8-1 against Tamás Vagvogli of Hungary. Looks like James is maybe going to the short queue. May try to make this. We'll see. He could bank it at the nine maybe, trying to hold the cue ball for some type of safety. This may fluke in. He's gone just past the side and does give up a shot to Shane. 
One he'll just come across the table in between the eight and the four, I believe, trying to play the three in the same pocket. All about pocketing this one, though. Position pretty natural. First real mistake from the South Dakota kid. And no love for James Shannon. He must just be itching to get to the table and just be given some sort of opportunity here. At this stage, I think he'd settle for just winning a rack or two. Yeah, and one of probably UK's favorite, Jason Shaw, getting ready to open with the opening break, excuse me, on table number two. We'll keep you updated there. Yeah, he's playing Ali Herji Karaj. And if you like to watch Effortless, that's one of the guys to watch, that's for sure. The lefty just as uh, silky smooth as it gets. Yeah, great to watch, isn't he? And you can do so over on Matchroom Pool YouTube channel. All right, James has got to bend this a little bit with some spin, side spin. Wouldn't doubt he f makes this one up in the corner or he hit it pretty light. Yeah, anytime you have to bend it, it's just not going to grab on the slick cloth at a light speed. See what Shane elects. He did tie up the three and the four. Not sure Shane really has a pocket. Now he'll play the one in the side off the five, trying to follow the cue ball into trying to produce something on the three. A couple of other players on the hill in their matches. Benjamin Belhassen of France leads GJ Owen Goran of Britain, 8-5, and an all-British clash going the way of Marcel Price at the moment, leading 8-3 against Courtney Simmons. I was wondering what the five would do. I thought that may break the balls out. I wasn't sure, and look at that. The five and four kind of retied up. No pocket on the three, I don't think, anyways. May bang the three into the nine, drawing the cue ball back behind the four five. That looks very doable. You don't want to fluke the three in. That's not terrible, actually. You would be behind the pink four, so. I think that's the shot, though. I think anyways. He may try to play the three off the nine in the side here, but he's definitely going to bring the cue ball back behind that little small cluster. Watch out for the nine ball going somewhere. Yeah, I don't know if he got the pocket he wanted on, on the four. I don't think he has that. And he got a little thin to where he can't just easily stop the cue ball. Take a look at this three ball again from Van Boning. He felt like it was a free shot trying to get position behind those balls. This is where James or any of these players have to really kind of, you know, claw and scrape trying to produce shots, off, you know, good safeties off of these kicks trying to get something going. He can get to the back cushion, but it looks like he may have to swerve a little bit unless he wants to come two rails behind the four. The 
got it. Not, if he hits it too hard, it won't take the English. He'll catch the four bit thin. Yeah, like that. Unless that could be intended. A lot of times you want to come up into a solid hit behind the ball. Really the first true kind of tester for Shane. He's had great shots after the break and has stayed in good control with the cue ball. Well, it was pretty clear, wasn't it, that if that shot worked out, you'd have a fairly straightforward run to the line in this rack. It's ended up taking almost as long as the previous five racks put together. Had to battle a bit more here. But in the end, it looks like it's going to be the same outcome. This cue ball set to where it's an easy shot. Just has to make a little decision with the cue ball going two rails around the nine. He's going to run to a little thinner on the eight than he probably wanted, but now he may have to address this with a little bit of bottom English. I don't know if he can go forward. Yeah, he's going to size that up, and maybe that side pocket's looming. Easy to come around the nine, three rails, though. And if there's any chance... Uh, that scratching, he'll definitely draw the cue ball. Well, that's pretty much perfect. So at least James Channon got involved in this rack. But the bottom line is he's lost it as well. Six of the best from Shane Van Boning. James Channon yet to get off the mark. So let's have a look at some scores going on elsewhere. Marcel Price, I told you, on the hill against Courtney Simmons. It's still there at 8-4. Mieszko Fortunski getting through without losing a rack. We've said that about a number of players today. And so Shaw won that hill hill finish against John Chapman. Badr Alawadi, who'll be playing at the World Cup of Pool in a few weeks' time for Kuwait. Safely through there, as you can see. Mario He, comfortable win for him as well. Won't be in the Austrian side for the World Cup this year. Benji Buckley has now finished the job against Vincent Fake. And uh, Ko Ping Chung, well, that was much earlier today that he got through. A lot of comfortable matches today for some of the big names, as I think was to be expected in this format. Yeah, Roman Heibler and Phil Wildman. Yeah, I don't know if you know Phil, but heard he's a very good very good player that runs a little nine ball tour here in the UK. Expect that to be a close match. Pia Filler, 2 1 up against Marco Vignola. And uh, Chris Reinhold, someone you know well from Moscone's JJ. He's just taken the opener against Georgi Georgiev of Bulgaria. Bart Chaplo of Poland, the latest to get to the hill, 8-5. He leads Faris Taleb of the home contingent. So Shane Van Boning now, seeing the winning line coming into view, wants to get the job done, preferably without further loss. 6-0 he leads. And just pouring him in on the break, and this is going to be 7 well, this cue ball came to rest, but I think he has enough angle to get above the three, and from there, tracking back down the table for the pink four should be very easy. So no worries here in rack number seven for SVB. Oh, he had to play rail first, so he was a little straight there on the one. Perfect now, though, to get, like I said, three cushions to the four. Jason Shaw trails 1-0. No, that's early, but he did just uncharacteristically miss a pretty easy two ball. By his standards, anyways. Shane perfect. Now he can just come one rail between the eight and nine. No reason to go around the nine, I don't think, anyways. Well, you were wondering earlier, Jeremy, what the odds would have been against Van Boning 
running out from the break in every rack. That isn't going to happen now because the sixth was a bit of a longer tail, but normal service resumed here. Seven racks gone, six of them break and run, and it's seven nil to the world champion. Jason Shaw on the other table has lost the opening rack against Ali Hergy Karaj. Shaw looking to add the UK Open title to the US Open that he's already won earlier in his career. We're going to have a look in on that now. Shaw looking to level here at one apiece, based in the States these days, of course. Yeah, didn't get to see him play much <clears throat> in the Whirlpool Masters. Took a loss there, 7-2 to two early. And that's just how brutal the Whirlpool Masters is. Shaw will be playing, as you'd expect, at the World Cup of Pool. Britain's leading player. And he'll be on the Great Britain A side with Elliot Sanderson, who'll be next up on this table, by the way, against David Sabiak. Yeah, Britain with two for formidable teams. see if Shane wants to take on another offensive shot. He's got a pretty natural cross side bank that'll lead the cue ball a couple rails towards the three. So I expect him to go ahead and attack here. He's one of the greatest ever at the thin cuts in the side, but I think this is just a bit too thin. So I think it will be the bank. Just with a little high left English. Probably maybe contacts the three if he does make this, going right above the six, trying to produce a shot. Oh, he's banked a little short. A little fortunate putting the six in th front of the three, so making things difficult for James, even though his best starter yet as far as pocketing a ball. These players don't mind combinations, Michael, but they generally want to get fairly close to them. They don't want to be shooting them from some great distance. So if he has to go with a follow English here, it could be a little difficult getting close. Draw spin, though, that would be the one. Yeah, and a little distance between the three and the six doesn't help matters. No, and I'm sure nerves are flowing. Sometimes, you know, when, oh, he could actually cheat it to get to the other side. So that's nice. Sometimes, though, you know, your nerves may subside a little bit when you're trailing 7-0 in this kind of situation, big underdog. He's gotten a little off angle on the bank. Oh, well, he went for the cut. That was surprising. and has handed all the initiative in this rack straight back to Van Boning. And Shannon trails back to his chair, wondering if he'll get out of it again before the end of this match. I wouldn't want to bet on him. Nothing personal, but Shane's going to get out here most likely, and the, ways of the balls have broke for Shane so far in the way he's played. I wouldn't call him an underdog to, to clear the last game as well. Things have turned against Tyler Steyer on table 24. He's now 3-2 down against Portugal's Miguel Silva. Yeah, I talked to Tyler a little while ago, you know, an hour or two ago, and seems like he's in a good place. He's played a lot of pool lately, traveling to Florida and you know, getting in a bit of action at times. And, Expect him uh, to make some breakouts uh, in the net this year. People don't realize a nine ball pool is hard to win. That's what's so impressive about the likes of SVB and Filler and Alvin Ocean. And you can say they're the, the favorites, but it's still just percentage points and they still keep rising to the top. Well, there are just so many players who come into these big events who could win the title without really surprising anyone. 
As for James Channon, well, whatever happens, he'll always be able to talk about the day he played Shane Van Boning on the main table just after Van Boning had become world champion for the first time. But it's not really going to be a happy story that he's telling, barring something quite remarkable happening here. Shane Van Boning on the hill, leading 8-0. We're on the brink of yet another whitewash on the main table here. Yeah, well. I think maybe Skylar Woodward has finished his match that quick. That would be a good sign for him, not knowing what the score or the outcome is, but if it was done that fast, good chance Skylar Woodward was the victor. Yeah, just having a little difficulty getting the scores from the other tables, but trying to keep you posted on everything as much as we can. And again, it's similar to some of the other players we've seen on the main table today. JJ, you, you might look at it and say, oh, it's a learning experience. But really, when you've not featured in the match, what can you learn from it? Yeah, that's for sure. And it's usually how whitewashes go. It's one player spending most of the time at the table. That's what Comp commented earlier with Alvin Ocean winning 9-0 with only three break and runs. You would figure his opponent would have worked a game or two out, but it didn't happen. Okay, a little side spin going towards. Oh, the eight's going to cover up the cue ball, it looks like. So we're going to get another look at James. I don't think Shane will take on the kick shot. Well, if the eight doesn't come to his rescue there, you have to feel that's game over for Shannon. Yeah, he's going to need more than that eight ball, though. But Shane will still play it. You know, like I said, staying in that game mode for Shane is something he likes to do doesn't really want to give an inch. Let's roll out to the jump shot, maybe. Oh, he's rolled out past it a little bit. Difficult little situation here if he can't get to what would be the left side of the one, and it appears the three's in the way. So if he passes this one, I, I don't blame him so much. In fact, I probably would pass this one. There's really only one safety, and that's a very touchy one behind the three, a couple cushions off the right side of the one. Now, if he can maybe bank this cross corner, that would be, yeah, that would be okay. I liked him attacking there. Don't think he's left to look at the one, but Shane will certainly let us know that quickly. So another chance for Channon, and maybe you could say this is the most realistic hope he's had so far of finally getting that first rack. I have to think if he doesn't take it, it'll prove to be his last chance. This is the sort of opportunity you feel if he'd had it in a very early rack. Might have been a different story, not saying he would have won, but could have been a bit more competitive. Given the way this match has gone, I think you'd have to say that although a 9-1 defeat at the start, he probably wouldn't have settled for us. He'd regard it as a pretty good outcome now. He's got to draw the cue ball back off the three. It looks like he's perfect, though. Doesn't really have to worry about coming near the eight ball. into that a little bit behind the five now so he looked at the five a couple times like it was a bit tight going by the nine and the seven so anytime you're behind the ball it's first a little uncomfortable now to a portion of the pocket
Doesn't have to do much with the cue ball though, Michael. Sevens over that same pocket. All right, looks to be good. And with the way this match has gone, if he can avert the whitewash, as several others on this main table have failed to do today, I'm not gonna say that he'll feel like a million dollars, but he'll be proud of himself. Yeah, and, you know, one rack leads to another. He may, and odds are, you know, he's not going to come back and win this match. It's just, I mean, you never say never, and that's going to hurt there. He's going to have to make one heck of a shot on the eight. And he's not going to get easy position on the nine either, even though it's somewhat near a pocket. Well, this is a test of nerve and temperament. He knows this shot, in all likelihood, is the difference between being whitewashed and at least ending the match, having made some impact on the scoreboard. This will be impressive, you have to say, if he pulls this off after everything that's gone before. Yeah, and you could see he felt the pressure. He was snatching at it a bit, and that may very well be that for James Channon. He'll get to go again on the one last side. But as far as this match is concerned, let's be honest, he's made mistakes. But overall, you would have to say there wasn't a great deal he could have done about this. Six break and runs from Shane Van Boning along the way. It's yet another 